Central banks around the world have been printing currency in order to stem the crisis which was caused by the bankers. Today we are going to discuss how interest rates are collapsing globally. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. I will give you some of the examples of the central banks who have this year decreased the interest rates in order to prevent this from expanding, from getting worse. These are just some examples in no particular order. Let's look at Canada right here. Canada's big banks have all cut their prime lending rates following the announcement that Central Bank had lowered its benchmark interest rate to 0.5%. So this isn't the first time it's done this. Right here, it's the second time in the year that they had dropped the rate to stimulate the economy after holding the rate steady for about four years. They're not the only ones to do this. I'll show you the different examples just want to get on to the last point. The central bank's rate influences the rates that the commercial banks offer because it affects the cost of borrowing. Although they're not obligated to, banks tend to pass on the savings to the customers, essentially. Further down below, they said that the last time they brought it down by 25 basis points, they only actually gave 15% of her 15 basis points to the customer. So they pocket the rest of the profit. Of course, they need to do this because their corp corporate profits need to increase every single quarter or they're going to be in big trouble. Let's move on to this right here, Australia. Our friends over in Australia, the Reserve Bank of Australia has cut its key interest rate by 25 basis points to an all-time low. We're talking about record levels right now. Rising property prices in Australia's biggest city, Sydney, a strong currency, and the drop in ore prices are among the reasons for the cut. I will tell you specifically that that's not true. The real reason to cut interest rate is because everyone else is doing it. They all need to follow in line. If the Federal Reserve is at zero, they need to achieve zero as well. They can't grow out of this. They need to use money printing and interest rates. They've already printed considerably, and they have a little wiggle room on the interest rates, depending on where it is. And in fact, we've seen the negative interest rates out of Europe. So this is no difference in that regard. Let's move on to New Zealand. Right here, they basically said they reduced the floating mortgage rate to 6.24%. Kiwi Bank brings it down to 6.15%. The Reserve Bank cut the official cash rate by 25 basis points to 3% this morning, and banks quickly followed suit, cutting their own mortgage rates. Now, what we have here is this example. Obviously, New Zealand's going to be higher than somewhere in Canada and other places, but the fact remains is that they're bringing the rates down. They're worried they need to stimulate the economy and they use interest rates. Why? Because when you bring that down, you're going to have companies and individuals who want to borrow more. If borrowing money is next to nothing, then they will do so. So they're going to buy the big ticket items like the cars, the boats, and the homes. So let's move on from New Zealand over here to the UK. Best fixed mortgage rate ever. New home loan war as HSBC offers a five-year deal under 2%. We're looking at announcing a 1.99 interest rate deal on a five-year fixed mortgage. What does that mean? That means housing prices can continue to rise. If they are heading downward, all you need to do is bring the interest rates down and you will definitely have people buying homes. Now, of course, if the interest rates move up to a normal level, you're going to have a big problem. Let's look at this right here as an example out of my book, The Money GPS. We're looking at the 30-year mortgage rate. Now, the statistics here have become even worse since I wrote the book, but it gives us a, an example regardless. Mortgage rates have been following, falling for 30 years in virtually a straight line. Look at this. From 1980... Up until today, it's been declining. 
Of course, you can stimulate the housing market if you continue to make housing more cheap to borrow that money, put it into the homes. That's why the homes continue to go up in price. If you want to know why real estate is rising, this is the only indicator you need. That's it. I get a lot of individuals who try to argue this point all the time, but it is undoubtable that the interest rates, how cheap you can get money essentially, is the absolute reason why the housing prices continue to rise. Now I'm gonna hammer through a few of these right here. Singapore surprises with the rate cut. All of these are in 2015, this was back in January. The central bank unexpectedly eased monetary policy, sending the Singapore dollar to its weakest since 2010, and it goes on. Singapore, a very strong nation in many ways. However, as they say here, city-state joins global monetary easing spurs the currency slide it is a global monetary easing every country is doing it and they need to follow suit let's move on to korea and right here what it says is south korea central bank lowered its seven day repurchase rate to an unprecedented 1.5 percent thursday the fourth such reduction in 10 months that's according to bloomberg they're another nation which has brought the interest rates down. They're worried about what's happening within China, of course, being very close by to them, but also what happens in Europe with the falling economy there. Then we look over here to India. And of course, there's a pop-up ad as usual. India's central bank cuts rates for the third time this year. India is one of these nations which has... Higher levels of inflation, no doubt, but they also have to worry about their economy and realize that there's imports, there's exports, and there is a global economy to worry about. So they bring the interest rates down, just like all others, and then over to China, experiencing the exact same issues as everyone else. This article happens to be out of Bloomberg, but the news is everywhere. I've covered it here on the channel before. China cuts interest rates to a record low after the stocks slump anytime you ever have any troubles you're going to have only two things from the central banks they can either buy up the debt print money or they can reduce the interest rates janet yellen prior to becoming the chairman said specifically and i quoted this before that if they could reduce the interest rates to a negative territory she would be in favor of that that is a quote then you have ben bernanke in 2002 in his famous speech when he was the uh, governor i believe and what he said specifically was that they would do anything at all costs to prevent deflation from occurring. So what are they going to do? They're going to bring the interest rates down to negative territories should they need to. They will buy up every single share of the stock market. They will do anything it takes. And that is exactly what's happening right now. China, just one very, very big example. And then even Hungary having the same issue. Hungarian foreign rallies as central bank cuts rates. It's this is a global problem, not just Europe, not just South America or Americas or the uh, Asia or anywhere. It's everywhere around the world. They're doing this. I just picked up a handful of examples right here, and you could see that this will continue. We were supposed to have been recovered several years ago. They, they had said initially, let's say 2009, that around 2011, 2012, there should be significant amount of growth within the economy. Here we are in 2015, still waiting for that boost, for that boom, for the bull market. Here we are still waiting it's not happening it's not going to happen yes the stock market can rise but we have seen examples historically if you pick up a book and read it for the deniers if you pick up a book it has paper on it and then you flip through the book and you read the words that are in that book you will understand what it says and that is that historically we have never been in a situation like we are today the stock market can move up but that is simply the dollars that it's measured in or the currency it's measured in being deflated and that's or inflated excuse me that's exactly what's happening right now people don't understand that because they don't know how to read that's the problem with today's education system 
And of course, if you found this video informative, please give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate that very much. I'm trying to, you know, be a little lighthearted if I can. It's very difficult to do so when the situation is so dire, so so serious. But, you know, I do appreciate all your comments, all your thumbs up, everything that you guys are doing for me. I do not forget that, absolutely. Last but not least, if you found the video informative, I know you'll find my book, The Money GPS, even more informative. And you can actually flip through the book. If you go over to Amazon, they have this look inside feature, which allows you to look through the book and see if you like it for yourself. Take care.